Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire you hear in the background. And today we're talking about lever action rifles, specifically 3030 and 44 Magnum. And the rifles I brought with me are this Marlin Model 336 in caliber 3030 and this Marlin 1894S in caliber 44 Magnum. Now these are both lever action, they're both Marlin, but they are quite a bit different rifles. However, the most important thing for today's comparison is they both have 20 inch barrels. Rifles like this are not generally the first choice someone makes for a bench rest target rifle. And because both 3030 and 44 Magnum ammunition can carry a fairly hefty price tag, and both of these can be loud and produce significant recoil, they're not usually someone's first choice for plink and pop cans. Rifles like this are made primarily for hunting medium-sized game like deer, and they can be and often have been a viable choice for home defense or personal protection type purposes. But the real question is, which caliber is better, 3030 or 44 Magnum? Well, I've got both guns and I have a few different types of ammunition. Let's shoot them side by side and see if we can answer that. But I want to start with showing you a close-up of the ammunition. Now from your left to right are 9.3 by 72R, 7.62 by 54R, 30-06, 7.62 NATO, 3030, 44 Magnum, 357 Magnum, 45 ACP, and 9 by 19. So in our lever action rifle, even though the 3030 and the 44 Magnum are meant to fill similar niches, they're quite different cartridges. We're going to start with a comparison of power, which in this case can be kind of tricky. If I were comparing the power of a 3030 and a 30-06, well those two cartridges have the same projectile diameter and ammunition is readily available where they'd have the same projectile weight. That's not so easy comparing 3030 to 44 Magnum. So what I'm going to do is go with the ammunitions that I would consider to be the most common projectile weights, which for 3030 will be a 150 or 170 grain projectile, and for 44 Magnum, 240 grain projectiles. Although I'm also going to shoot this Hornady Lever Revolution ammo, which has a 225 grain FTX projectile. So let's go to the chronograph and see what kind of numbers we get. Normally when I do chronograph testing, I make you sit through the tedious process of watching me shoot it as I call numbers off. Well today we've got a couple of guns and several different types of ammunition, so I'm going to do all the chronograph stuff off camera. Well we chronographed our ammunition and crunched the numbers and there they are. Now when you're comparing power, there's two things you go by. Velocity and energy foot-pounds. Energy foot-pounds being the real bottom line. And remember, more power does not necessarily equate into more effectiveness. But with our velocities, with our 44 Magnum, we got 1,722, 1,727, 1,831, which seems like a lot more, but remember this is a 225 grain projectile compared to 240s. But with our 3030, with our 150s, we got 2,348, 2,384, and with our 170 grain bullets, 2,181. That's a lot more. When you compare these two, the 3030 has a velocity of 621 feet per second more than the 44 Magnum. That's a lot more. However, it achieves that with a 150 grain bullet instead of a 240, 90 grains less. That's a lot less. But when you compute the energy foot-pounds, what it comes out to is 1,836 versus 1,589. That's still 247 pounds more, which is, again, a lot more. But remember, these are just numbers on a page. How do they really translate into performance on various types of targets? Well, let's shoot these two rifles side by side and see what we can learn about that. So how will those differences in velocity affect drop at distance? Well, I'm going to start with the 30-30 and I'll shoot the upper target from 50 yards and then the lower target from 100 yards and we'll see how much drop we have. And the ammunition I'm going to use is the Federal 150 grain. Then I'll repeat this process with the 44 and see if it has a greater amount of drop than the 30-30 did.
Now this is me shooting from the kneeling at 50 yards and this is me shooting from a bench at 100. And you notice that a couple of these are off to the left. Whether or not that's a big gust of wind or just me, I don't know. But the real point is, from 50 to 100 yards we see no significant drop. Now I'll paste up these shot holes and do the same drill from 50 and 100 yards with the 44 Magnum and see how they compare. And for 44 Magnum I'm going to use the Winchester White Box 240 grain semi-jacketed soft point. So how'd we do? Well, these targets tell us a few things, one being that I can't shoot the 1894S as well as I can shoot the 336. But as far as drop goes, the upper target is me shooting from the kneeling at 50 yards, and the center of the group is about here. Now the lower target, you see that I shot five shots instead of four, and it took me a long time to shoot it. Well, that's me, again, shooting from the kneeling, but this time at 100 yards. And with the gusts of wind and the hail that was falling, it caused me some delays. I also had a couple of flyers. But the center of the group is right here, and you can see that that's only slightly lower than our 50-yard group. So although the 44 Magnum's lower velocity might cause significant drop at 200 yards, at 100, the difference is negligible. So let's try 200 yards. I'll shoot the target on your left with the 3030, the target on your right with the 44 Magnum, and let's see what happens. For those who are having a little trouble seeing the impacts, I've now covered them with orange pasties. And you might think that somehow the 3030 miraculously didn't have any drop. Well, actually, the aiming point was right here, so there is a little bit of drop. With the 44 Magnum, the same story. The aiming point is right here, and we see only one round hit the paper at the very bottom. 
So depending on what kind of ammunition you're using, your 3030 may have a velocity of give or take 600 feet per second more than the 44 Magnum, which didn't seem to help much at 100, but at 200 makes a lot of difference. The 3030's greater velocity made either a little difference or a lot of difference, depending on how far I was trying to shoot. But how much difference will its greater velocity and energy foot-pounds make when shooting hard barriers like these $2 concrete blocks? I'll go back 25 yards and I'll shoot the block on your left with 3030 150 grain projectile, and then the block on your right with the 44 Magnum 240 grain projectile, and we'll compare the results. Well, from my point of view, it looked like the 44 Magnum, despite being significantly less powerful, seemed to be more effective. Let's set this up again and see if we can confirm those results. Well, if there was a difference in effectiveness, it wasn't much. Shooting cinder blocks and all that is fun, but now it's time for the moment of truth. Shooting the meat target. Most of you are familiar with this. It's leather jacket skin, followed by pork chop pectorals, followed by oranges to simulate lung tissue, more pork ribs on the back. And then behind that, as always, the new and improved high-tech fleece bullet stop. However, we're doing a slight variation on this today. This is a deer meat target which means it has two layers of leather jacket to simulate skin. Deer have a fairly thick hide. And there's no pork chop pectoral. Most likely you're going to shoot a deer through the side where there isn't that much muscle. And to simulate shooting through both lungs, we have a large number of oranges to simulate lung tissue. Also, in typical deer fashion, he's going to be naked. There's not going to be any clothing over him. Now I'll go back 35 yards and I'm going to shoot this with our Federal 30-30 grain semi-jacket and flat nose. And let's see how we do. Well, we've got our target torn apart. Both rounds went through the ribs on the front, shattered them, no surprise there. Absolutely pulverized our orange lung tissue and made substantial exit wounds through the ribs on the back. Now, if you've seen very many of our presentations, you know that rounds like 9x19, 40 Smith & Wesson, 45 ACP, 357 Magnum are very typically stopped by the first to the fifth layer of fleece. Well, both of those 3030 bullets went through the entire fleece bullet stop. They're gone. So we'll put out a new meat target, try this again with the 44 Magnum, see how that compares. For the 44 Magnum, we'll again shoot from 35 yards, and I'll use the Winchester White Box 240 grain semi-jacketed flat nose soft point, and I'm also going to shoot this Hornady Lever Revolution ammo, bear with my pronunciation of that, which is a 225 grain FTX projectile, like a ballistic tip. Well, you notice that I fired five shots instead of two. I was using different types of ammunition. I didn't want to shoot just one shot of each. And I saw that one of those rounds just skimmed the edge, so I shot an additional shot to make sure it was a good center hit. And taking that into consideration, we still see a lot of damage. There's big holes in the ribs on the front, which stands to reason the 3030 is 30 caliber, is where the 44 Magnum is 42 caliber. And so, yes, it's 42 caliber. I'll explain that in a minute. But looking at the damage we have here, we see that it just obliterated our orange lung tissue. And there's some very impressive exit holes in the ribs on the back. The soft point projectiles both went completely through the fleece bullet stop. As far as the FTX projectiles, one went through and one was stopped by the fleece bullet stop. And I'll show you a close-up of that one in a minute. Now comparing the damage to this target, 
as opposed to the one we shot with the 3030. Even taking into consideration it was shot four times, it really appears like there's more damage done to this. And here's the one FTX projectile we recovered. You can see some really good expansion, and there's the red tip of it. So what's the takeaway from all of this? Well, based on the chronograph results, we can say that the 3030 is clearly more powerful by a significant margin. And that much greater velocity, although it didn't make much difference in terms of drop at 100 yards, made a profound difference at 200 yards. And a lot of people would say that you wouldn't really make a 200-yard shot with a rifle like this, and they may have a point, but if you were called upon to do so, with a 3030, that's a viable option. With a 44 Magnum, if you wanted to make a 200-yard shot, you're going to have to really know your rifle and either have a rangefinder or be pretty good at estimating distance. But even though the 3030 was more powerful, when it came to shooting the cinder blocks and the meat target, I didn't see much difference in the results. Oh, and you heard me mention that the 44 is really a 42 caliber. When you buy 44 Magnum ammunition, it's very commonly loaded with a 429, a 430, or a 431 diameter projectile, which is compressed down to a 42 as it goes through the barrel. But still, 42 is a lot bigger diameter than 30. And it looked like the 44 may have done more damage to the meat target. But in terms of which of these calibers is really better in your lever action rifle, there's some other things to take into consideration. One is cost of ammunition. And prices may vary in different areas. But I paid $18 for this box of 20 rounds of 30-30 ammo. If I translate that into cost per 50 rounds, that's $45. As were both of these boxes of 50 rounds of 44 Magnum ammunition cost me about $38 a piece. So 44 Magnum can be less expensive. There's also the advantage of, because 44 Magnum is typically a handgun cartridge, for those who want a handgun and a rifle of the same caliber, there's a lot of different options out there as far as 44 Magnum handguns. There are some 30-30 caliber handguns, but many people would consider something like a Thompson Center Contender or a Magnum Research BFR to not be quite as practical as something like this Model 29. Now, a lot of what we did today had to do with shooting at long distance, and we used the deer meat target, and we're talking a little bit about hunting. But lever-action rifles can and often have been put into service for home defense or personal protection purposes. And in that case, I can tell you that a 44 Magnum or a 3030 will be plenty of power. And as far as concerns about overpenetration, both will have great concerns in that area. The one significant difference is that this 3030 has a capacity of 6 plus 1. The Winchester version uh, has a capacity of 7 plus 1 when it has a 20 inch barrel. This 44 Magnum, although it's virtually identical to the 3030 in terms of overall length, and both of these rifles do have 20 inch barrels, it has a capacity of 10 plus 1, not 7 plus 1, which many people would consider a significant advantage in a roll like that. But the bottom line of which one of these is better has to do with your personal preference, what you're planning on doing, and the conditions under which you're planning on doing it. And which is right for you? Only you can decide. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the 3030 vs. 44 Magnum video.